We as humans have uh, an intrinsic disadvantage in the outdoors. We have our brains, and that makes up for it, usually. But animals almost invariably have better eyesight than we do. Now, welcome to our top three in five. Today, our five-minute rapid-fire episode is on glassing methods, techniques and equipment that will make the difference in the field. And these are all chosen uh, by long experience and are determined by the type of terrain that you're hunting. We have uh, a standard binocular, like you always carry when you're hunting, a high-power binocular, which you use for long hours of studying uh, difficult terrain, and then a high-powered uh, spotting scope that will give you the advantage of picking out small details at distance. Let's take a look at each in turn. Your handheld binocular should be an everyday piece of your equipment, just as important as your boots and your rifle or bow. Never go afield without this. It should be something that's comfortable in your hands, that fits you well, that has high quality enough glass, that it doesn't give you eye strain, and usually either in an eight or 10 power, depending on your personal preference. Eight power gives you a little more field of view. The 10 power will give you a little bit more detail in the field. Make sure you've got your diopter adjusted correctly so that both your eyes are focusing uh, with the focus ring, right? And you'll use this to study tight terrain. You use this when you approach something to pick out anything up close. It's the first thing you always do when you sit down in the new glassing position. The next type of glassing gear and method that you'll commonly see in open country hunting is a spotting scope. And this is the far end of the spectrum from your everyday binocular. It gives you extreme detail at distance. Helps you pick out and uh, determine the biggest buck from a bachelor group. It helps you score an antelope or something like that uh, way out there. It helps you do tasks that require extreme optical precision. You want to buy good quality in a spotting scope. I started uh, life as a young guide with a hundred dollar bush now and it served for a summer but I got such bad headaches from using it day after day that I saved all my tips that year and I went and bought a Swarovski and I've never looked back. Optical clarity and quality in a spotting scope that you may be staring through six to eight hours a day is crucial because you really don't want to get the eye strain and the headaches and, and so forth that go with it. You'll use this on a good stable tripod to simply pick apart the country and um, look for those really fine details that you need to see. If you find a, you know, a, a mountain sheep or something two miles away, you may be able to tell it's an animal, maybe even a sheep with your binocular to be able to tell how big a ram it is with a good spotting scope. Now you might think that the final optic in this trio and the final method in this combination is kind of a gap bridge or something that can close that distance between your everyday binocular and a big spotting scope. And in a way, yeah, it is. A high power binocular mounted on a tripod gives you the ability to see a lot more detail than your daily binocular, but it doesn't quite reach that spotting scope uh, capability of detail. What it does is gives you ultimate stability with both eyes in an optic that's still packable. In fact, on certain mule deer hunts, coos deer hunts and so forth, I take both, right? I would rather spend a whole day looking through these than either of my others because they don't give you any eye strain. A good binocular, as long as it's good glass, mounted on a tripod, well, it enables you to pick out detail just about like no other, because you don't tire and you can see at that 15 power level. That's my favorite. You can do a 12, you can do an 18 or whatever, but the 15s are really kind of where it's at. These were pioneered by coos deer hunters in Arizona, where you literally spend day after day, sometimes 12 hours a day, picking apart uh, desert brush country. These are ideal for looking in shadows underneath trees, whether it's a ponderosa in the mountains for a, a mule deer or 
you know, a mesquite tree in the desert for a, a coos deer or whatnot. You can methodically take apart country and see everything there is to see. The first year that my brother and I used these mule deer hunting, we shot 50% more deer than we expected, big deer. And all of those 50% more deer, we were guiding them as well, right? We felt like we would not have found without this arrangement. Now you can do this a few different ways. This one is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's on an outdoorsman tripod. That's kind of like the iconic best of its type. And it's got a quick detach mount on top, right? You can also use a tray type, which is versatile across any different binocular. That'll go on top of your tripod. And you can even add your daily binocular on top of that and use it. Works pretty darn well. Uh, but the, the best way to get the most out of this system is to have a really high quality tripod with a good fluid head, not a fluid head, just a high quality head that enables you to pan smoothly from side to side and up and down. Get it set so it's comfortable for you at the correct height so you can just lean into it and look hour after hour. I like to set the tension so I can actually bump the binocular with my nose to pan across the countryside. Get something like this if you're a serious open country hunter. The weight is worth carrying unless it's really savage mountain country and you will absolutely find more game and bigger, older bucks and bulls than you would with any other type. And that's a wrap for today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to our top three in five minutes episode. Keep in mind, those of you that are listening, that we are filming all of these, and those will be posted on patreon.com slash backcountry. If you want to put eyeballs on the equipment and the methods we showcase, please join us there. We'll see you next time.